right, so I have been playing Genshin Impact since mid-July of 2021. I'm currently AR55, and I've been doing commissions, expeditions, and artifacts every single day. And I've started to get somewhat bored. So, in an attempt to fix my boredom, I decided to make another Genshin account. But I didn't want just another Genshin account. I wanted to test out an idea. I'd like to think that besides the temples with trial characters, the Traveler actually just solos the game. So I wanted to see if it was even possible to actually beat Genshin with just the Traveler. But then I started pondering even deeper. According to the in-game cutscenes, the Traveler's weapons of choice are the Dole Blade and the Silver Sword. The two worst weapons in the entire game. So, is it possible to beat Genshin Impact from the Traveler's perspective? Let's find out. Outlanders, your journey ends here. Lumine or Aether? A question that will define our entire challenge. And so I felt the best way to decide that was to flip a coin. Heads Lumine, Tails Aether. We get heads, but since I like Aether's design more and I think he fits the story better, I pick Aether. And since we are going to solo this game, we will be known as Goku. Wait! Don't go! Give my sister back! Before we start the challenge, let's go over the rules. First rule. We can only use the main character. Trial characters will be allowed because I think they fit the story and you cannot progress in certain dungeons without them. But for the outside world, we are only allowed to use the main character. Second rule. We can only use the dual blade and the silver sword. Third rule. No co-op. The main character doesn't have people randomly transport into his world to help him. So, why should we? Fourth rule. We can only use the corresponding element for each region until that region's Archon quest is complete. So, for example, I cannot use Geo Traveler at all in Mondstadt until I beat the Mondstadt Archon quest. I already have the leeway portion recorded, and it follows the same rules I've established here. So, if there are any other rules you'd like to see be added, comment them down below. And, hey, while you're already down there, why not subscribe if you're enjoying the video? We start our journey and open our first chest. A reward on the road. I heard that a lot of times. We equip our first artifact and level up our prized possession. We explore a little bit longer and trigger the cutscene from beneath the actual objective point somehow. And we get to see the big cinematic moment. That loses some style points because of the 2D birds in the background. We start the main quest line for Mondstadt, obtain the power of the Animo, and test out our new skills. Is he talking to a dragon? <gasps> we pick up the crystal that the dog left behind and head outside of the forest. Outside the forest, we meet Amber and we get to say the funny line. We unlock Amber and the game forces us into using her. What are you at? But she remains as useful as she is in everyone else's party. We open the chest and obtain our biggest power spike, the Silver Sword. But since we don't have any resources right now, we'll stick with the Dull Blade. After we do Amber's work for her, we level up the Silver Sword, head over to Mondstadt, and obtain the best item in the game. Not long after, we get sucked into a hurricane and we have to fight the big dog we saw earlier. You actually got the power. We head into the Knights of Favonia's headquarters and find out about the three temples we need to enter in order to weaken Storm Terror. But more importantly, we unlock wishes. Get it on, get it on, 
I don't really know what I was expecting. We'll just use the fodder to level up our six star weapon. We make it to the first temple and we do use Amber a little bit in order to burn down the vines, but don't get too attached because we will not be playing her ever again. Know your fucking place, trash. Dragon's breath, is that? Thank you, you're going to help me. Don't hesitate to come to me. In the second temple, we meet up with Lisa, who actually found a way to be less useful than Amber was in the first temple. But after some hard work and determination, we clear the second temple. Break it, and we can head home. <sighs> the thought of putting my feet up and relaxing has me all fired up. We meet up with Kaya, who gets stuck on some rocks, and we head inside the temple. But before we clear the temple, let's do an artifact review. We are running the two-piece Traveling Doctor set with an EM Sands, EM Goblet, and Attack Percentage Circlet. Since we are currently using Animo Traveler, I felt that EM would be the best stat to build for right now. That way we can get the most out of our swirl reactions. Water! We can use this to put out fire! Good idea. That's some keen observation. We should get Jean to give you a title and make you a knight. I can see why Deluke hates the Knights of Avonius. Seems probable. After leaving the temple, we get AR locked out of the next Archon quest, so we have to head out to gain some more experience. We big brain the Ice Pillar puzzle, fight our first Abyss Mage, and then we move on to the second worst enemy in this entire challenge. The Eye of the Storm. I would rather have a baseball be thrown at my Adam's apple than fight the Eye of the Storm ever again. Once we hit Adventure Rank 10, we head back to HQ and are given the title of Honorary Knight of Favonius, which, looking back at the water conversation, does not seem like much praise. We head outside to look for the Femboy. Eventually, we find him at the Windrise Tree. He tells us that Storm Terror's real name is Devalin, and that the Animo Archon has been away from Mondstadt for a very long time. But, we are then interrupted by another Eye of the Storm. So you know what that means. <laughs> After two days, we defeat the Eye of the Storm and continue talking to the Bard. He says he was helping Devlin with the curse and that he would have cured him if we didn't interrupt him. So, in order to pay him back, we have to go to the church to take the Holy Liar. We sneak into the basement using stealth mechanics that would make the Batman Arkham series cry, and we find the Holy Liar. Who are you? After the failed mission, we meet up at Angel Share to discuss our next course of action. Deluc says he knows a guy whose third cousin's brother's girlfriend's father knows a guy who told Deluc where the liar is and asks if we are ready to go with him. We head into the hideout with Deluc, and I do use Deluc some because I don't <coughs> have Deluc <coughs> on my main account. <coughs> we go through everyone's room and eventually find the key and go straight to the elevator to find the liar. We encounter the first Fatui agent and fight him off. During the battle, Goku dies, but Deluc is able to revive him with the Dragon Balls, and we finish the fight. <laughs> On the way to the next objective, I stopped to do one of my dailies one of which included a shield enemy that took way longer than it should have to kill. We make it to the first location of Devlin's Tears, but we have to go through a Ruin Guard first. Was the fight long? Yes. Was it fun having 20 being the highest damage number? No. Was it more enjoyable than fighting the Eye of the Storm? Yes. We make our way to the second tier and proceed to walk past all of the enemies. But, since I was curious about the three barrier side quests in Da Duapa Gorge, I decided to fight all the mobs here. <laughs> but, tragedy struck. Goku had fallen in battle. But Goku got back up like always and surpassed his limits. And by combining the forces of Animo and fire from a pot, we deleted the first barrier seal.
but we can't do the other ones right now because it's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? We can't do the other ones right now because they require cryo and electro, but I'll see what I can do, and if I'm able to accomplish it, I'll let you know in the future. But you gotta subscribe in order to see it, I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. After that side quest, we head to the location of the last tier and walk straight past the Eye of the Storm because- No. We go through the dungeon, the old same old same old. The only big thing of note is that our lack of damage is really starting to show on the large slimes. We make it to the second to last floor and clear out those enemies, and then a Pyro Abyss Maid shows up. Normally it takes about an hour and 33 minutes to take down an elemental shield, but since there's water nearby, we are successfully able to make the Pyro Abyss Mage wet and obtain the last tier. We meet up with the gang at the Dawn Winery, purify the crystals, and repair the Holy Liar. Then we head up to the best suicide cliff in the game and listen to Venti sing Devlin's song. We found out that the person behind all of this is none other than... You mean? We get AR gated again, but that's okay because we can unlock a lot more things now. The first of which being our first constellation, which makes us Budget Gene. We can then buy our second constellation, which is in fact a constellation. After that, we collect our ascension materials and max Goku and our silver sword up to level 40. For artifacts, we have evolved to a two-piece berserker set and two-piece instructor set so that way we can increase our crit rate and elemental mastery while grinding for more ar we made some soup by burning ourselves and using the power of the wind later we attempted a time trial challenge but quickly realized i could not do that in time after making it to ar 18 we head into the final act of the mondstadt archon quest we clear out some enemies and head straight towards Storm Terra's lair. We make it to the entrance only to get interrupted, but we were successfully able to blow them away. If you got the joke, you should like and subscribe. We make it to the top of the tower and we learn how to work the puzzles, which do something. I, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. After one last team meeting, we set off for the final battle with Dabalin. We start off the battle in the air so that we can take out the first of Dabalin's blood clots, and after four minutes, we gun him down. We take the battle on land, and I do use Venti some because I don't have Venti. After two weeks, was our, chance. our chance shows up, and we successfully calm down Dabalin. since we flew like this together. Huh, Devalin? We head back to the church and give the Holy Liar back to Barbara. Uh, 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 the Holy Liar! She gets upset and Venti fixes the liar and we angrily chase <laughs> after him for some reason. At last, Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. Three, two, looking for one, go! Mondstadt calls this a god? A resident rodent beats invasive vermin. <laughs> you should have held your tongue. Will the fighting be faster? After we got smashed by Senora, we meet up with the Femboy at his favorite place for one last talk. He talks to us about the next nation leeway and tells us that it's not always about the destination. It was about the mints, love the mints, baby, get a home run. Oh yeah, love the mints, love the mints, let's go mints. And with that final conversation, we obtain our last constellation and our journey in Mondstadt is finished. But the real challenge is in leeway.
Hey everyone, thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know this video is very different from everything else I've posted so far, so if you made it this far, I appreciate you. The actual Genshin video is over. I'm just gonna take some time here to thank you guys and tell you about the future of this channel. First off, we recently hit 100 subscribers, which is honestly amazing. I never expected any of this. I'm just a bored college student who wanted to make some videos. And it's actually crazy to think that over a hundred of you guys want to see more of these stupid videos from me. I enjoy reading your comments and responding to them. I usually read them during class and breaks at work, editing, and when I first wake up. So thank you all for your comments. And even if you didn't comment on those videos, I still thank you for even watching them. So here is where we are at right now. I'm currently a sophomore in college. I work a part-time job at a sorority house and I make YouTube videos. But there's some good news and bad news. Bad news is that both the college and job are big time commitments. My days usually look like this. I wake up at six o'clock, go to campus at 7.20, stay there until 3.30 to go to work and come home at 6.30. So I'm really only able to get footage and edit from this time span. But here's the good news. I am currently finished with my finals for the semester and my job is only open when the school is open. So I get to use this chance to make more videos. I already have some videos planned out, some of which involve the microphone because I paid $120 for this mic. I'm gonna use it. I would like to have the leeway video out by mid January. The leeway portion took me about 13 hours of gameplay to get, and I've trimmed it down so far to about an hour of footage, but I still have to write a script, do more trimming, and edit the video, so that's probably gonna be a while. But yeah, that's it for the video. Hopefully I'll see you guys later, and drive safe. So tell me